to introduce herself and tell you what service and program she works with here at NCCU. Um, you have one more opportunity to attend at Eagle Towns, which is next week, I um, believe, April the 19th. Um, so look for that information you should have at your instructor should have given it to you. It should be here in this room, but if that um, location changes because of the type of session it is, we will let you know, okay? Your instructor will let you know. So please give your undivided attention. If you could put your phones away, um, and we'll go ahead and get started. Awesome. Sounds good. So good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody? Good. Happy hump day. Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. My man in the back is like negative. Okay. So we are actually, you know, obviously we're here for the uh, Eagle Talon series and I know that it's crunch time. So I'm assuming that everyone's here because you need that, right? Okay. Um, in addition to that, we are here because we are vastly approaching the end of the semester. Yes. So the pressure's on, is it not? Sure, okay. So can we make the best of the next 30, no more than 40 minutes? Fair enough? Okay, because my uh, domain is centered around communication, that means I need to hear you, okay? So can we make the best of the next 30 to 40 minutes? Yes. Here we go. All right. So again, my name is Ms. Chasten. Um, I may have had the pleasure of connecting with some of you possibly in a UNIV course, or um, maybe you have already come to visit the speaking studio or possibly the writing studio. But I am the director of the speaking studio. By a show of hands, how many of us are familiar with the speaking studio? No? Okay, cool. All right. What about the writing studio? Awesome. Awesome. Great stuff. Hey, how are you? Good. Um, <clears throat> I am a former lecturer in the mass communication um, department. Do I have any mass comm majors? Okay, two. Here we go. Um, but uh, as of August of 2016, I then transitioned over into the speaking studio. Okay. With the speaking studio, we offer a host of services, um, both small group interaction and one on one consultations. We work on crafting and developing speeches. We work on delivery. We work on interviewing skills. We work on strengthening and enhancing the basic um, skill as it pertains to interpersonal dialogue, all right? We are a vital critical resource that the university has made available to each of you. So if I have yet to see you, I trust that I will see you throughout your reign here at NCCU, okay? Fair enough? All right, somebody remind me of my role. I am whom? Ms. Chasten, and what's my role? Y'all hurt me. The head of the speaking studio. Excellent. Excellent. So as I mentioned before, we are vastly approaching the end of the semester. And I'm not sure, certain as to who may have attended the first go round of my particular Eagle Talent series where I talked about speaking with a purpose. OK, speaking with a purpose. And I tied it into preparing, organizing and developing a presentation. OK, organizing, developing and delivering a presentation. I attach that to pre preparation, what it means like as we entered into our freshman and our sophomore years here at NCCU, what it means to organize and tap into the sources that treat your purpose, right? I talked about having an expiration date att attached to opportunities, if you will. Just like seasons come and go, so do windows of opportunities. Right. So it's extremely paramount. Right. That we maximize our potential when it comes to including or thrusting ourselves in uh, instances that will help us to boost and increase our skill level. Fair enough. Yeah. OK, so I was intending to carry on with that message. But then something sparked in me and it said, let's be real about this good thing. OK, when I say let's be real, as I stated, the end is two and a half weeks away. So I'm sure your focus at this point is to finish what? School and to finish strong, is it not? OK, so we have a lot of tasks, a lot of deadlines, a lot of, of assignments that are on the table, do we not? Sure. So my purpose today is to provide you with several tips that will assist you 
okay? In finishing strong, evaluations round the table, round the clock. Some of us are confronted with a combination of tasks where we are not only required to submit a written component, but we are also required to develop an oral component, right? So the tips that you will receive today will assist you in developing a healthy, right, purposeful, as well as meaningful project, task, or product, okay? In other words, you can construct something that's extremely good, really profound, the substance is there. You come to the forefront and your delivery is poor, so guess what? that grade that you thought you deserved is not reflected, okay? The paper shows something strong, but when you come to the forefront, your delivery offers something what? Different. So these tips will assist you in ensuring that you deliver and execute something that is healthy, something that is effective, something that will warrant a positive evaluation. Questions or concerns before we move any further? We're good? Okay, if you have yet to pull out something to jot notes with, I encourage you to do so now. Because we're in an institution of learning in the next 40 minutes, I'm sharing tips with you. Even if you throw it away on your way out, jot something down. Can we do that? Okay, share with your fellow family members. If one next to you doesn't have a sheet of paper, give them something, okay? Pull out your phone. <clears throat> We're good? Everyone has access. Excellent. So our objectives for the next 30 to 40 minutes will be to discuss various methods of delivery to address both verbal and nonverbal components, and lastly, discuss the importance of rehearsing and practicing. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so when it comes to the different types of delivery, you primarily will be confronted with four. Extemporaneous, impromptu, manuscript, and lastly, that of memorized. Okay, I'm sure at this point in the game, most of you have been exposed to number one extemporaneous. Okay, yes, sir. What was the last three types of delivery? You said various methods of delivery, verbal and non-verbal communication. And the last one would be rehearsing, discussing the importance of practicing, becoming familiar with the material in which you've constructed. So again, most of you at this point, I'm sure, have been confronted with that of extemporaneous delivery. Extemporaneous suggests careful preparation. It suggests that you spent time, energy, and effort with the product and the material in which you're crafting. It suggests that you will utilize speaking notes, whether it's an outline of some sort or possibly index cards. It suggests that my feet are so planted in the material in which I've developed that I'm able to have open dialogue and conversation. Extemporaneous. I'm not dependent on the outline. I'm not dependent on the essay in which I've written. I am fully dependent on my feet being planted in the material, extemporaneous. Next, we have impromptu. Impromptu suggests lack of preparation, off the whim, okay? Off the top of my head. I have two to three minutes, maybe not even that. You engage in impromptu responses in class, okay? Formulating responses on the spot, right? Spur of the moment, impromptu. Next, we have manuscript. There are some instances in which that is required. Some of us are tech majors, uh, science majors, where it's important, it's essential for us to be accurate. Precision is key. In those instances, we need a manuscript, a point of reference. 
Lastly, we have memorized. At this point, it's too much to commit a three to five minute, four to six minute oral presentation to your what? Your memory. Who can do that? Anyone? No. Okay. So why even thrust ourselves into, into that domain? Memory. We're Xing, we are eliminating, but straying more towards the style of delivery that suggests an open dialogue and conversation with our audience. Most importantly, it suggests that 80 to 90% of the time I am visually connecting with my audience, yeah? The only way that I can do that is if I am completely familiar with what I've crafted, yeah? Hello, yes? Okay, excellent. Any questions or concerns as as it pertains to the different styles of delivery. <clears throat> Excellent. So then we move forward to the verbal components. Remember, we have two and a half weeks left on the clock. Okay, some of you are required to, pre to present or engage in small group operations, or maybe you have an oral presentation of some sort that is approaching. Okay, so then let's begin to examine the verbal components that we should consider when developing our oral presentations. <laughs> we have volume, we have rate, we have pitch and inflection, we have pauses, we have articulation, pronunciation, and dialect. Volume, simply the loudness, right? The softness of your voice. You have to consider your environment. Are you yelling at your audience? Are you possibly whispering? Okay. Can you be heard in every aspect, corner, element of the room? Are your listeners having to lean forward? Are your listeners or your professor asking you to repeat certain elements of your presentation, your volume? We have rate. That is what? How fast, the speed in which you speak. Keep in mind that we have a uh, room for both slow and rapid rates of speaking. Both uh, <clears throat> have a place in presentations. If I'm using a slower rate of speaking, I may be suggesting uh, a sense of seriousness, a sense of heaviness, okay? Of importance, something of, that's somber, possibly. If I'm including a more rapid rate of speaking, I may be suggesting something with a strong sense of urgency. Rate. A lot of times we know that we are expected to present. All we want to do is get up there and get it what? Done. Done and sit down. Okay. But not always considering that sometimes people are really interested in what you've developed. So then we're giving them or offering them a disservice because I'm cheating you out of what I've crafted, right? Speeding through the material. If I increase my rate of speaking, I may then increase the likelihood to offer mumbling. Okay. Decreasing my level of intelligibility. So then we have pitch and inflection. That's the manipulation of sound. That's when you come with the vocal variety, right? Think about when you are calling mom or your homeboy, your girl, what have you. Girl, let me tell you this, right? Mom, guess what? I just received 100 on this um, biology test that I was studying for. In other words, we use emotion to convey what? Meaning. Convey what it is, right? Delivery adds birth to our ideas. It gives birth, if you will, but pitch and inflection. Think about the speakers that you've witnessed that are monotone, okay? Boring. If you come to the forefront with no excitement, I'm not suggesting that you have to jump for joy, but if you're not enthused or emotionally connected to what you've designed, how can you expect your listeners to be? If you are disconnected for four to six minutes, imagine the one who's evaluating you. Okay. So make sure that your vocal variety complements the subject matter. Fair enough? Awesome. We then move to pauses. A lot of times we like to rush through. We've already established that. It's okay to pause and to breathe. 
swallow, right? Sometimes you say two, three sentences on one breath, okay? Don't rush it. You're in the driver's seat. Each and every audience member that is present is following your lead. A lot of times, pausing allows for the audience to digest what's being said. It gives the audience an opportunity to rest in the material in which you've offered. It also gives you as the speaker an opportunity to gather your thoughts, to hit the reset button. Okay, you mess up when you're presenting. The number one thing that you tend to do is offer what? An apology. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, missed that point. Right. Oh, I messed up. Yeah. You're drawing attention to the error that just showed itself. It's inevitable that errors will occur. The number one thing that we could keep doing or should do when speaking is to press through it. Right. No one has a copy of your oral presentation, probably your professor, if it's a class-driven task, okay? But other than that, no one knows when the error is surfacing. So why draw attention to it? Okay. But learning to pause. Another type of pause that tends to show itself would be the vocalized fillers. The ums, the errs, the you know, you feel me, the like, the whatever, you know, attached with the clap, all of this, right? It is, <laughs> exactly. It's the vocal moments that we try or the vocal um, options that we insert in the blank moments, okay? I can't have a moment of silence because everyone is looking at me. I only have three to five minutes on the clock and I gotta get through this good thing, okay? But becoming comfortable with pausing, minimizing the vocalized fillers, if after every other thought and every other word, we hear um and er, you know, you feel me, like, whatever, it becomes annoying. It suggests moments or heavy uncertainty. Remember, two and a half weeks on the clock, we're being evaluated. Elements that I can consider when producing a strong and effective delivery. Fair enough? Articulation, that's the intelligibility, the clarity. Can I understand what it is you're saying? In the speaking studio earlier today, I had a sophomore, biology major, I'm sorry, chemistry major, presenting tomorrow informative speech. We're sitting down, going over her outline, ensuring that her ideas are fluid. I tell her to read to me. Sophomore, couldn't understand half of the material that lied before me, okay? That's a problem. If I can't determine the articulation, all of the vowels and the consonants that should be present, that is an issue, okay? We have to give credit to each and every syllable that is present, right? So in that, um, and, and we'll hold off, we're going to look at some examples in just a moment. Let's look at pronunciation. Pronunciation is that of whether or not a word is said correctly or incorrectly. Please do not include words that you are uncomfortable with saying. Okay. If you have words, names that you are uncertain about, inquire prior to the date of delivery. It says something about your character, you seeking the time and the opportunity to establish and to verify before sharing and executing. Articulation versus that of pronunciation. Okay. Pronunciation, whether or not we say the word what? Correctly. Articulation offers the level of clarity, intelligibility. And then lastly, dialect. That's the speech pattern that's attached to um, us or those of us who are from different geographical locations. Dialect. Questions or concerns there? So what are some words, and looking at some examples, and I'm going to circulate a handout just to kind of keep on 
or as a reference point as you continue forth. Again, we have two and a half weeks. Uh, never mind. <clears throat> it's a lot. I wasn't expecting. I really wasn't. Um, this number. But if you are interested in a handout for future pockets of wisdom, please see me at the end. If we're looking at the examples presented here, will you? A lot of times we engage in lazy, laziness when it comes to speaking. Yeah, we forget that we have to flip the switch. How I engage or how I verbally talk, discuss with my parents or professionals, there should be a difference. Will you, Ma, will you stop by the store on your way home, right? The words are will you, okay? The word mine, a lot of times we add a consonant. What consonant do we tend to add? An S, and when you hear it, what happens? You cringe, right? Okay, I have mines, okay? But you're cute though, yes? Okay, but you're a junior, right? Graduating in the next year, I'm concerned, okay? I oughta, I ought to. Okay. What are some other words that we tend to merge or combine when we're engaging in lazy speech? Think about ourselves, let's be honest. About to, about to. all right, I'm about to. Okay, I am about to, what else? Say it again. You all, okay, y'all. All right, remember when you're speaking formally, we try to minimize contractions or the use of contractions. So it then becomes you all, what else? You be, say again, I'm fitna. Yeah, I'm fitna go. You're what? Okay. What are you doing? There you, <laughs> exactly. Any others? Think about things that you commonly are exposed to, something that you find yourself saying. I don't know. I don't know. I do not know. Okay, what's something else in the back? Here we go. Talk to me, guys. Say it again. I've been it's what? I mean, I say nigga a lot. Okay, I say nigga a lot. All right. Maybe you use that as a vocalized filler. I don't know. Okay. Maybe he uses that term to insert on blank moments. Yeah. Okay. It also brings us um, the the whole notion or the importance of utilizing a thesaurus. Okay. Language development. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. You can breathe such life, bring such flavor and color to your thoughts, all in the language in which you select. We all have smartphones, most of us, yes? Okay, tap in. What's another way of saying happy? Maybe you will then say, I'm extremely elated. Okay, all right. But allowing and challenging, challenging yourself to broaden and strengthen your vocabulary base. All right, questions or concerns? We're good? So let's transition. We talked about several methods. Knowing that extemporaneous style of delivery is probably the most commonly expected style within the classroom. We've had an opportunity to look at several verbal components. Lastly, let's talk about the nonverbal components. Personal appearance, eye contact, facial expression, posture, gestures, and lastly, that of proxemics. Personal appearance. We're always conveying messages. Communication occurs both verbally and non-verbally. That means we have to be mindful of our personal appearance. If you know that you are participating in a formal presentation, maybe you should consider business casual attire. Would you agree? Yes. That's probably a whole nother segment to discuss what exactly that looks like or what it means. Yes, right? <clears throat> but personal appearance. Making sure that you're wearing clothing or articles of clothing in which you are comfortable with, right? You're already somewhat nervous, possibly battling apprehension, yeah? So then if I'm wearing something, I'm constantly, what, readjusting, yeah? Shifting. 
my ladies with the accessories. It's a distraction if every time I move my wrists or my arms, it's clinging, right, against the podium. Okay. So thinking about the articles of clothing attached to your accessories when you are presenting orally. Making sure that your hygiene is on 10, yeah? Meaning not loud and uncomfortable, but being mindful. If you're one that really doesn't pay attention to it from day to day because you have an eight o'clock class, well, because you are presenting at eight o'clock, you may wanna spend the extra 15 minutes. Okay, personal appearance. Next, we have eye contact. Remember, your audience desires to develop a rapport. They're desiring to establish some type of connection. You do that by visually connecting with them. If I'm speaking to you all and the entire time that I'm talking, I'm looking at the ceiling, I'm down at the floor, and yeah, you know, so um, yeah. So we have eye contact, right? Um, where's the connection? Okay. It suggests, again, uncertainty. It's an insult to your audience. I don't care enough about you all to carefully prepare. Okay. But in order for me to deliver extemporaneously, I need to be able, what? To visually connect so that I can hold and maintain an open conversation with my listeners. Eye contact. That means I'm not gravitating to one side. A lot of times we gravitate to our dominant side, but that means I'm connecting with any and everyone that's present from the far right to the far left, to the front, to the back, to the middle. Okay. Next, we have facial expressions. Okay. Ensuring that what I am offering verbally is being complemented by what's being offered nonverbal or non-verbally. Okay. A lot of times, because apprehension and anxiety tend to show themselves, we then find ourselves sniggling and giggling when it's not warranted. Okay. If I'm talking about a somber topic, okay, why am I laughing? Okay. Making sure that my facial expressions, again, complement the verbal message that's being offered. Posture. Making sure that I'm upright and erect, that I position myself, that I'm able to connect again with any and everyone that is present. My posture, if I'm sloped, if I'm down here, if I'm shifting, okay, all right, again, how can you expect me to be moved if you seem uncomfortable in your, your own material? Next, we have gestures. I like to say we don't have to rap on a beat, meaning you don't need hand gestures for any and every thought that's offered. We must learn to become strategic. Maybe I'll use my hands to describe and to show emphasis, but every word doesn't require a hand or a gesture of some sort, okay? It then poses as a possible distraction to your listeners. The same thing with proxemics. If you're one that can walk and talk, you already can see I like to walk and I like to talk. But for some, that may be a distraction. Okay. You don't want to be space invaders, so you want to be mindful of your front row. Okay. Making sure that you're not overstepping your boundaries, but you are aware of everyone's placement. Okay. If the lectern you're utilizing your space, it's your home base. Always find your way back to it, okay? If you would like to plant your feet and just remain there, become comfortable in this space, okay? Go to your classrooms ahead of time. Check the equipment. Okay. Look at the layout of the classroom, the positioning of the desk. Determine, make your environment work for you. Questions or concerns as it pertains to nonverbal components. Lastly, let's talk about the importance of rehearsing and practicing. Remember, evaluations. In order to execute strongly, you have to do what? Practice. That means you have to exert time, effort, and energy into the products in which you all are developing. 
I'm not saying that one, two nights with this, you'll become a perfect public speaker. The perfect public speaker does not exist, but the effective speaker does. It's really or extremely evident to those who do practice when they come to the forefront. And you'll see it if you have yet to. You will witness it in the classroom. You will see your fellow family members fumble. All because they thought that, it, that they could possibly wing it. They chose not to invest or prepare. But practicing. Okay. Come to the studio. Practice amongst your family, your friends, your dorm mates, what have you. But don't allow the first time that you connect with your outline or your speech or your project to be your date of delivery. Right? When you're looking down at your index cards and you're drawing it close because you're uncertain as to what you wrote. Right? You're speaking and you're looking back at us for the audience to tell you or indicate that you've arrived at the end of your presentation. I don't know. I think I'm done. Are you done? Um, yeah. Okay. You should signal that the end is approaching in conclusion. There's always an introduction. There's always a body. There's always a conclusion. It doesn't matter your discipline. It does not matter your subject of choice. There's levels to this. Okay. The objective is to enhance and to build upon. Remember, it's the opinions of others that will grant you opportunities. It's the opinions of others that will decline, okay, or possibly accept. So if you have the opportunities to strengthen and enhance and to become better at the craft, then why not do so? Yeah? I didn't hear you. Yeah? Good stuff. Okay, so as a quick recap, okay, remember, just tips to get us through the next two and a half weeks, okay? Those of us attending summer sessions, I'm sure you will have an oral presentation of some sort, okay? If not, returning in the fall, I'm sure you will, okay? So what are some styles of delivery? Extemporaneous, that's the primary style, okay? Manuscript, we have two more. Impromptu was the last one. Memorize. Somebody give me the verbal components to consider. Articulation and lastly, dialect. Here we go. Nonverbal components. Facial expressions, eye contact, posture, gestures, hand gestures, proxemics. Okay. And at the end of the day, we will always practice, practice, and what? Practice. Remember tips to see us through questions or concerns what's my time like did i do good yep, yep. okay excellent it was a pleasure connecting all right if you're interested hold that thought if you're interested okay yes sir my man especially standing right there if you're interested in enhancing and strengthening your skill base i do have a couple of handouts if you would like to pocket as you exit fair enough all right, happy hump day. Hey. Advisor needed you to signature that I told you.